Okay, we're back, and we're looking at a slightly more realistic kind of problem involving in basically a roller coaster. If, um, if a ball is rolling down a hill and it gets to the bottom and goes up a uh, loop to loop, um, what's the minimum height that the ball has to start at up on the hill in order to just make it around the loop? That is, it, it's going just fast enough so that it doesn't fall off the loop when it gets to this point up here where it's at the top of the loop. Obviously, falling off the track on a real roller coaster would be bad, so we don't want that to happen. So, basically, we're dealing with circular motion here. We're on a circular track. Um, we'll assume that uh, because of this, in any circular problem, we're going to have to make use of centripetal force. That also involves a force diagram when you're at the top of the loop. That's your critical point. So, here's a case where uh, the ball is upside down and one force we know has to be there is, is going to be gravity, so mg is pulling down. But then we also have this idea of inertia. When the ball is rolling up the loop on that far side there, its motion and momentum are going upwards. When the track curves over, the ball is going to push up on the track. So now if, if that's your action force, think about what's the equal and opposite reaction. Well, if, if the ball pushes up on the track, then the track has to push down on the ball with a normal force. And if the center of the circle is the center of the loop-to-loop, the, uh, -loop, then both these forces are positive centripetal forces. Okay, each of these is pointing towards the center of the circle. Now, the trick is, we have to try to find out what's the minimum speed that the ball needs to be rolling at in order for it to not fall off the track. Okay, well this is really a, a question of its translational motion, the V uh, velocity. Now if you're just about to fall off the track, think about that normal force. When you fall off the track, then that normal force can be zero. There's, there's no more pressure between the ball and the track. So your minimum speed squared Notice that the mass is going to drop out. It's just the acceleration of gravity multiplied by the radius of the loop to loop. Okay? So here's the deal. Uh, now we're going to be thinking of this as a relatively small ball, where the radius of the ball is, is much smaller than the radius of the hoop. I don't want to have to consider the radius of the ball right now. So um, now we can think energy. We, we know this, the linear speed, okay, that translational speed you need at the top of the hoop. Now we just have to figure out, well, where does that speed come from? Where does that energy come from? Well, it starts off as potential energy when you're up on the hill. Now, when you're at the top of the loop, you also have some height. It's effectively uh, twice the radius of the loop to loop. Okay, again, we're, we're not if the ball is very small compared to the loop, we're not going to consider the height of the center of mass in this case. Okay, I'm simplifying it a little bit for that. Okay, but now you're also moving. It's moving linearly, so you have to have at least that much translational kinetic energy, but now what's new in this kind of problem is that you're also rolling. It's spinning. Well, it takes it takes some rotational kinetic energy as well. Okay, but if there's no slipping going on, that's our phrase that we love to see, we can go ahead and make a little change here. If this is a solid ball, which we're assuming, we can plug in the moment of inertia, 2 fifths m little r squared. And then we can also put in this fact that the linear velocity is the radius of the ball times its angular velocity. This is going to be v squared over little r squared. Okay. The radius of the ball drops out. And now, what's also kind of cool is the mass of the ball drops out in all of these terms. And we can simplify a little bit. Acceleration of gravity times twice the radius. We have one half. Now here's the minimum speed squared is the uh, acceleration of gravity multiplied by the radius. 
I can put that in. Let's see now here, one half times two fifths is one fifth. Then we have the minimum speed squared, which again is going to be acceleration of gravity times the radius of the loop. Yeah, it looks like a factor of acceleration of gravity drops out. And let's simplify this even more. So our height, that minimum height, is twice the radius, one half and one fifth. Uh, let's see, that's going to be a common denominator of 10, so 5 plus 2 over 10 times the radius of the loop. Well, that's 7 tenths. We end up with 2.7 times the radius of the hoop. Okay. Now I have another video that does this for a block just sliding around with no friction or anything. And that minimum height turned out to be 2.5 times the radius. So you might ask the question, well, why do we need more energy in this case for a ball than we do for a block? that's only sliding. Well the answer to that is some of your energy goes into making the ball roll. It goes into that spinning motion. And if you don't go any higher than what you did for the block, you don't have any energy to make up that what goes into the rotation. So in other words that that linear motion doesn't have enough kinetic energy. It's not going fast enough forward to stay on the track. It's going to fall off. So you need to boost it by just a tad, okay, two-tenths of the radius of the loop-to-loop. -loop. That's that little bit of extra energy um, that's going to go to the spin, and you're still moving fast enough forward, okay, that's translational energy, in order to make it around and not fall off. So this is a little more realistic, because on, on real roller coasters, you have wheels and stuff that are spinning. You have to account for all of that um, in order to get this right. So I hope this helps. And uh, until next time, we'll see you later.